Now, this is a big fish story, and we all know how unbelievable they often are. What we do know is that Australia's mighty Murray cod can grow up to 1.8 metres and live for up to 75 years. Now, unfortunately, the Murray cod and other Australian native fish are in trouble, especially in the Murray-Darling Basin. To help save several species of threatened native fish, a three-year project has just restored more than 40 kilometres of the upper Murrumbidgee River, just south of Canberra, as Greg Borshman reports. Australia's native fish species are in trouble, especially in Australia's food bowl, the Murray-Darling Basin. And much of the problem is the pesky, introduced European carp. The carp are a huge problem, Greg. They occupy 90% of the river's fish biomass. Listed as one of the top eight most invasive species, it's an incredibly large problem. But there are these great remnant pockets of native fish. The Macquarie perch, the trout cod, the Murray cod, they're hanging on in there in places where the river habitat is still at its best. Phil Palmer was shocked when he first moved to the Upper Murrumbidgee, just south of Canberra. He remembered the river country where he'd raised his family in Western Australia. I have spent the last 20 years on the Fitzroy River in the Kimberley region. My wife's a traditional owner for Nigana and the river's very important to her. So we spent a lot of time on there with our five kids. And we benefited greatly from having this living, thriving, healthy river system a healthy river and healthy country abound and the billabongs were full of things to eat. You can swim and drink the water at the same time. After those 20 years in the Kimberley, Phil Palmer moved east to manage the Scottsdale Reserve, just south of Canberra, a 1,300 hectare conservation property owned by Bush Heritage. I came across a very different river system, beautiful in its own right and rugged and wild and Australia's second longest river but not quite so healthy and I was quite distressed to see the amount of sedimentation and weeds growing on the banks, the carp, and I thought, no, I really need to ensure whatever I do on Scottsdale, that part of that is helping to restore this river back to its former glory. As good as his word, over the past three years, Phil Palmer has been involved in a project which has restored 40 kilometres of river corridor along the upper Murrumbidgee. The key was remnant habitat in two remote gorges, the Breadbow and the Collington. The habitat there was still in relatively good condition, with healthy populations of remnant native fish. But in between the two gorges was six kilometres of heavily degraded river flat and farmland country. In those areas, what we see is the historic removal of the riparian vegetation, the river flows a lot more slow and so often we have a lot of sand build up and we might have mud and a lot of willows and blackberries. Antia Braidman is the facilitator for the Upper Murrumbidgee project. When I was looking at this river three years ago, I saw the Breadbow Gorge and just downstream, basically straight into walls of blackberry and willows and I'd actually come to work some days and not feel very optimistic at all with just the sheer size of the problem. So Antia Braidman rolled up her sleeves with the local volunteers, removing those walls of blackberry and groves of crack willow. And on the river flats and lower slopes, 16,000 ribbon gums, snow gums, bottle brushes and wattles have been planted on Scottsdale and the 27 private properties. The blueprint for how it should be done was Australia's native fish strategy, developed more than 10 years ago. Back in 2003, the native fish strategy had a lot of expert input to look at what we must do to help native fish recovery. In the Murray-Darling Basin, we've got some of the most unique fish species in the world. I mean, the Murray cod can grow up to be 1.8 metres long and live for up to 75 years. These species are iconic and they're found nowhere else in the world. The only catch is that for the past seven years, the native fish strategy has not been funded by the federal government. When the funding was withdrawn from that strategy, there was so much disappointment because to be able to do the work that we need to help our fish recover, we do need to have funding, we do need to have input. The Upper Murrumbidgee was identified early on as a demonstration reach for the native fish strategy. So, with no federal funding, the community took things into their own hands. Antia Braidman again. Basically, after the funding for the native fish strategy was reduced, it was up to the community to keep the demonstration reaches going and to keep 
action on native fish going and it, it's a credit to the partners that we've been involved with and the funding that we've been able to cobble together from other sources that have actually kept this demonstration reach going and allowed us to do this work. What do you look at now? What do you see when you look at the river now? I'm sitting on the river now and I can see areas where the willows have been removed. Three years ago, those areas were a dense stand of willows with very little ground cover. I can see small native plants are actually starting to regenerate on the edges of the waterways and we can see recovery happening along this stretch. But have you managed to find a 1.8 metre Murray cod? Well, at Scottsdale, we've managed to find a 98 centimetre cod. So (laughs) that's pretty good. And we had a team come out and they also found a very small Murray cod. And in a way, that makes me much happier than finding a 1.8 metre cod because if we have a small Murray cod, we know that they're breeding and there's recruitment happening. And that's excellent. Now, 98 centimetres, almost a metre, that's a mighty big fish. So, just to make sure, I thought I'd check with Phil Palmer out on Scottsdale. Has he seen that big cod in the Breadbow Gorge? (laughs) I haven't seen anything quite that big, Greg, but we have seen some pretty big ones in there and they're good, healthy populations and we know that there's a future for them. Phil Palmer, I've got to ask you this question. Can you throw in a line and catch a Murray cod for dinner? You can throw in a line, you can catch a Murray cod, but if you eat it for dinner, I'd be pretty upset, Greg. Look, it'd be fantastic. Imagine if we flipped the coin and 90% of the fish biomass in the Murrumbidgee was cod. It wasn't carp. If we flip that coin, then you could certainly do that, and I'm sure they'd taste great. That's Phil Palmer, manager of the Bush Heritage Scottsdale Reserve, ending that report by Greg Borshman. And we'll put a link to that remarkable project on the upper Murrumbidgee River on our website.